Welcome everyone to another night review. Today we have this 2022 Nissan Frontier, the redesigned Nissan Frontier, and we're gonna take a full look at these exterior lights and get it out on the road, take it for a test drive and see just how well they do. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss more night reviews and be sure to check out the full review of this Frontier in the description below with all the details. But check it out, we have the Pro 4X model. So we've got these LED headlights standard with the LED daytime running lights. One other unique thing are these little amber colored lights, little running lights on the inside of the headlight. I think that looks pretty cool. These are reflector style and you can see the accent light above and below. Plus we've got LED fog lights exclusively on this Pro 4X. And you can't really see it very well right now, but you can see the tow hooks down there and the lava red on that grill. For the blinker, you'll see that that's also LED. So these are full LED on this Pro 4X. LED headlights are optional on the SV, otherwise those get halogen headlights standard. And this paint color is called Tactical Green. It's definitely like an army green looking color. Check out my day review if you wanna see more about it. But as we come over to the side, those are actually the marker lights. So these little amber lights right there are the marker lights. They're brighter than what they appear on the camera here, but it's just a really unique and a clever placement for those marker lights. This Frontier is bigger than the previous generation Frontier, and we don't have mirror lights, but as we come around to the back, LED taillights are actually standard. As for this blinker, I'm not sure if it gets LED on the lower trims, but you've got a red matching LED blinker right there. It looks like we also have got uh, LED license plate lights because they're pretty white and bright, but what do you think of the exterior lights here? Let's take a look at the brake and reverse lights. And now another thing is that this is actually a soft open and soft close tailgate. And this is a small five foot bed, but it is extremely well illuminated. So those halogen lights up above or those incandescent lights are standard, but then you'll see you've got LED lighting on both sides of the bed. And those are really, really bright. So they illuminate both sides of the bed and you've got that top down light that does a really nice job. We've got Nissan's Utilitrack system check out my full review for more details, but there's also a 120 volt plug back here. And just a quick peek at the back seat, it's actually got a pretty bright LED light up above, right in the middle, and there's storage under these seats, so that will shine right down on the storage areas. And you've even got two backlit USB charging ports here. And then into these front seats, so there's no special ambient lighting or approach lighting or anything like that, which is not common on this class. We've got these leather Pro 4X seats. You'll also see you've got a leather steering wheel and we've got LED interior lighting, but let's check it out. Now let's go ahead and start it up, foot on the brake and it's an illuminated start button. You've got a couple of big screens in here and if you haven't seen my full review of this Frontier yet, be sure to check it out because there's a lot that's different, but still some that's very similar and practical. Now, as always, buttons on the side, so the mirror controls are illuminated, the lock button is illuminated, and then just one window switch. So they definitely skimped out on what buttons get lighting, and it's all that soft red lighting. Just to the left of the steering wheel, you have interior brightness controls and some more buttons. You have an inverter in here and Nissan safety shield, cargo lamp and downhill descent, and then a rear locker and traction control down there. So those are all illuminated, which is good. And the steering wheel also gets this soft red lighting. So I'd love to know what you think. It's kind of unusual because it's all white backlighting up there, but it's all red backlighting for the rest of the interior. So it's a little bit different, not matching, but what do you think of this? And then in front of us, every Frontier trim level gives us this display and it's all controlled with the steering wheel. So there's a lot of information that you can scroll through and you can check out my full review to see a little bit more, but it's very clear and easy to see. And then coming over, you'll get a smaller eight inch screen on lower trims, but our Pro 4X gives us this nine inch screen. And as you can see, the screen is nice and bright and the controls, I like how these have like lines on the knobs or like a circle around the knob. And then all easy to see controls. The red is easy on the eyes, dual zone climate control down there. Plus down here, all of your buttons and switches and even USB charging ports are backlit, like your heated seats, heated steering wheel, parking sensors, etc. And of course, it's good to see your four wheel drive controls are also backlit. The main thing is that it is just super, super dark in here. I mean, there's like not an ounce of ambient lighting at all. 
and if I turn on the overhead lights, it lights up this area pretty well so you can see it. You've got a, a storage bin, cup holder, and a wireless charging mat, and there's not a single speck of light down here at all. Then when we open up this armrest, there's no lighting in there either. So it would be kind of nice to see something in this area, but it's not typically uncommon for this class of a vehicle. And the glove box, do we have a light in here? Yes, we do, so that's good. You'll also find this automatic dimming rear view mirror optional on this uh, Pro 4X model. Then overhead, our lights are, you just push on the light, which is what I like. You don't really have to miss anything, you don't have to be precise, but you've got LED lights up here. Those are optional, those are not on every single trim level. And the switch to actually like turn on the lights when the door opens and whatnot is in the middle and it's not lit up. There's really no extra lights right here. We even have a sunroof in here and you can't even see the sunroof button, so that's kind of annoying. But the visor does have a little vanity light. And the interesting thing for settings, etc., you've got to go in this information display here and use your steering wheel to control it. So go to vehicle and then lighting, and then you've got a little bit of lighting customization here, but nothing extravagant. Now to look straight out at the beam pattern of these headlights. So with these reflector style headlights, it's pretty bright in the front and then it kind of fizzles out on the side. So we'll get a better look at these later, but it's nice and bright in front of us and then turn the high beams on and that's bright right in front as well. So it's not, well, hopefully these do a good job. I'm excited to get these out on the road. I wish the width was a little bit better, but if I turn the fog lights on, get a little bit more width. It's not super bright like a lot of them right down there. It's mainly right out in front and low, but I haven't been able to drive these in the fog and there are no IIHS ratings for these headlights as of the time of this video. And now let's take a look off into the distance. So if we go ahead and zoom in, this is where I like to get kind of a long range look. You can see that the red post and fire hydrant are well illuminated on that side, but it's pretty dark on that left side. So we'll see what the range is with these headlights once we get out on the road. Like I said, there's no IIHS ratings. The high beams light up that hill pretty well. Let's go ahead and get on the road. All right, y'all, let's get behind the wheel of this Frontier. So for a more detailed drive, be sure to look for my full review where I get on it more, talk about the driving impressions, especially the steering on this thing, the steering, it's hydraulic steering. So it uh, feels very similar to the last generation. But in this night drive, I just want you to get a first person point of view of what it's like to actually drive this truck at night on dark roads with the automatic high beams on and just see how it does now right off the bat um we're going to start out on some you know better well-lit roads and then we'll get on a dark road in a bit and switch cameras to get a real good look at the lights but right off the bat i've got the automatic high beams on so as i turn the corner here and they see that vehicle or when you get to a certain speed they turn off but they should not turn on because of that car on the left And they stayed off and they're staying off right now probably because of the overhead lights so since they're off let me show you what this v6 is all about it's got a nice sound it's fairly punchy it's got good horsepower ratings too but that's not what this is about as you can see with these overhead street lights so more like city driving the automatic high beams will stay off which is probably a good thing but some cars are less sensitive to it some are more sensitive to it uh, quick note before we get on the dark road we have an automatic dimming rear view mirror in this model that's an option you won't get that on every model no automatic dimming side mirror and really no ambient lighting at all in here it's actually fairly dark all over the place in here there's some buttons that don't have lighting so they definitely did some cost cutting with that but that's not what this truck is about but i still want you to know what it's like to be inside this all new 2022 Frontier. All right, we're just about to get on the dark road and I still have the automatic high beams on. All you gotta do is flip the stock forward and then you can flip the stock again if you wanna turn them off. But let's switch camera angles right now. So the high beams kicked on and they just kicked back off very quickly because we just crested the hill and that car was coming. So that's good, they should turn back on and they did right there. So a little bit of a delay, but those are nice and bright. Now let's turn on just the low beams. And I can see into that corner fairly well, especially on my lane. 
the opposite lane not as well but let's see how we do around the corner the light up ahead on the corner because it's a little bit of an uphill is pretty poor on the other side of the road and then as we come up here we still have the low beams on all right distance is good on my side it's pretty good overall now high beams that's excellent the high beams are great really nice and bright in front of us we have reflector style headlights not projectors so the beam patterns are going to be a little bit different going around the corner that looks good i'm going to leave the automatic high beams on because there's a big light up here that usually turns off some and i want to see how sensitive it is so we'll see if these shut off And they stayed on so i'm glad that street light didn't shut them off but with the high beams here you can see the reflectors on the road way up ahead now to the low beams they're still good it's hard for me to tell because it's not a super sharp cutoff line now peripherally out into the width it's pretty good off into the distance but not so good up close fog lights are off right now and then fog lights on and i'm still happy with those i'm definitely happy with that now I'm gonna turn the high beams back on. Oh, there we go. And they just turned back off. So the automatic function has been sharp, worked pretty well. We'll see how quickly they turn on. There they go. So that's good. Now I did get to take this on a road in the dark with quite a bit of curves. And I've gotta say the straight line, straight ahead distance, I've felt very comfortable with, but the cornering, not so much, right next to the vehicle on sharp turns. Semi sharp turns back there, to the driver's side it's or to the passenger side it's very good but to the driver's side it's not so good but i haven't been able to scientifically test these like the iihs does so be sure to look for those ratings if you really want to see an absolute score compared to some competitors let's get on it again six and nine speed are pretty smooth for the most part high beams are on automatically and they're staying on so way off in the distance there's red stop lights and for whatever reason the high beams just kicked off it might have thought that those were tail lights up there but they're actually stop lights so that could be but what do y'all think of these headlights i think they're good maybe not great it's hard to tell but let me know what your thoughts are down below. I wish we had a little bit more lighting in this cabin here. It's just really, really dark. It's pretty simple though. It's a pretty traditional and simple layout. But be sure to look in the description for my full review with all the details on this 2022 Frontier. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.